Hello, my name's Jane Hartshaw and James, and I've been a spiritual teacher for the past 22 years. Um, my journey began, as, as quite a few others did, in early childhood. Um, my first impression of spirit, I remember staying at my nan and granddad's house, and I was probably about five years old at the time. Um, and my nan, uh, my great nan, sorry, had, had passed away, and it was probably about a couple of weeks after her passing. And I was in her bedroom, um, and I distinctly remember feeling breath on my face, so I could hear it, I could feel it. And of course at that age it quite frightened me, so I popped the light on and of course there was no one visible there that I could see. Um, but it certainly sowed a seed. Um, I thought, what on earth was that? Of course I was very young, I, I don't even particularly think I vocalised it at that time. Um, but that was my first indication of spirit. Um, life moved on and um, my older brother Mark and I, we both kind of had the ability to see spirit. Um, we, we constantly say to each other, did you see that? Did you see that? Of course, our upbringing was one where it wasn't particularly encouraged. Um, I really don't think my mother um, had done anything like it. So it kind of it wasn't wasn't poo poo, but it was never um, made to feel normal. Um, I had a son when I was eighteen years old. Um, and sadly, he passed away at three weeks. Um, by that time, I was regularly seeing spirit. Um, my journey began. I decided to go to a local spiritualist church um, to see if I could get a message from them. To be honest. Um, and I didn't that night, but what I did get, I sat in the audience and I was um, watching the medium in awe um, and I kind of realised that what he was doing, that's what I'd been doing all these years, but I hadn't realised it. Um, and there began a lifelong passion for me in earnest to develop my medium ability um, and to do some good with it. Um, it was almost if I could have given someone the reassurance that I received that night that Ben hadn't just died and that was the end of it that he'd gone home as I like to call it these days and the knowledge that I can communicate with him and that I will see him again for me that changed my life my perspective um, life moved on for me and I subsequently had a very hard time carrying children um, I ended up with one son Jack who's, who's, who's grown up now um, and I also had a little girl called Lily who passed away um, so as I say, I, I wouldn't do this work um, without knowing that a reading can either make someone's life very different and give them hope but equally I hear lots of stories where it's done the opposite um, and maybe misinformed or, or not very well trained people are, are taking on this role um, and causing quite a bit of damage actually. So what I wanted to do was put together a series of short videos um, to kind of myth bust a bit. I think there's a load of illusions going around about what this work is um, and one of my greatest joys in life is to kind of um, put people straight. Uh, I'm not the kind of person who goes around um, with unicorns and butterflies and all that sort of thing. I'm quite a down-to-earth lady um, and I like to be proved, I'm quite sceptical, prove it to me, I'm not just going to blindly believe. Um, my realism I think has really helped me in this work. Um, I also, have, with every reading I'll do, I'll go and sit down with the intent that I'm going to prove the fact that the, the continuation of life, it, 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 to me it's, it's as natural as breathing. Um, I can't understand sometimes why people have such a hard, hard idea thinking that this can be it, the death of the physical body is the end. Uh, I like to think for a moment, if any of you have seen someone who, who's passed over, and a lot of us sadly do have to see that with our loved ones, um, do you understand what I mean by the body becomes a shell and the soul's gone on? Um, and it's the soul, I believe, that comes to earth with a series of lessons to learn. Um, so let's, let's, let's rewind a little bit and go back to basics. So psychic is the ability, um, not to talk to the spirit world, psychic is the ability to be able to sense things, to be able to know things without being told why. It's a feeling, it's a sensation, it's a knowing. Um, I always like to say to my students that um, psychic ability is knowing something without knowing why you know it. Um, so um, once you get your head around that, we're on the same page. So psychic can be the fact that you might feel there's something, something, um, there's an atmosphere in the room and you can't quite put your finger on it but you know something's happened like an argument um, it could well be that knowing that, that a family member or friend is in distress although you've had no contact with them and when you finally do make contact you realize that yes your hunch was right um, psychic care will tell us a lot of things it will not bring through nan it won't bring through mum but what it will do it gives an insight into a person's well-being into their emotional state and a good trained psychic um, will tell you without asking but they'll be very sensitive to that and um, they'll be able to know just by sitting in your presence what kind of day you've had, what kind of week, and ultimately how we can improve this. So if we stop seeing psychic and, and mediumship as a, um, I don't know, a flippant, uh, it, it rather annoys me when the, the subject's all poo-pooed and, and taken the mickey out of, because uh, it's valid, it's as valid as, as I believe uh, any other belief system. 
but we don't often get a lot of stick for it. I think that might well be because of the way it's portrayed in the media. Um, I think they, they sometimes the programmes that come out, they get the most off-the-wall people, um, sit them on benches and talk to us to thin air. It doesn't do us just much good. Um, but there are many people like me out there, day after day after day, proving survival of the soul. Um, and we're not in grand theatres and we're not making £300,000 a night. A lot of the best work happens in someone's front room or in, in a small church hall where we are striving to prove that this can't be it, this isn't it. So my belief after um, the years and years of study I've done on this subject is that when we um, finish this earthly life, our soul goes forward. I, I like to think of it as going home. Um, and there we're met by people we've loved um, and they can meet us and, and they take us across. Um, in my experience, it's a very gentle, loving and peaceful experience and there's certainly nothing to fear. I say a lot to people, I don't fear passing over. Sometimes I fear the journey getting there because that can be unpleasant. Um, but I do believe it's a, pace, a place of, of just pure love. So we know that we're here on Earth. Um, why? I mean, how many times have I asked that question to myself and how many times have I had that asked of me? Um, and I've kind of uh, realised that life, think of it as a, a school of learning. Um, so each soul, each of us come here because we have a series of lessons to learn. So it could be that you need to learn patience or tolerance or acceptance. Um, and certain things in life will keep coming up to you in order to give you the opportunity to learn this lesson. Now we can bury our head in the sands and it will keep repeating and repeating and repeating. Or somewhere along the line we can catch on and say this isn't working for me, I need to honour myself and go forward. If you think about it, we're kind of conditioned from a very early age um, to um, conform, to fit into society, to leave school, have a, have a career plan um, and work really hard till we're 65 and retire. Then we can live off the money from that if we're not too knackered and, and kind of um, go to our graves happy, leaving enough money for our children. Um, that never really sat with me. I couldn't quite get my head around that, that we've got to um, sort of sell ourselves out and, and take on this different persona in order to be a respected member of society. Um, I did try it, not quite for me. Um, so I'll encourage, I encourage people all the time now just to find out who they are um, without the layers and layers and layers of conditioning that, that, that kind of life puts upon them. So let me ask you, who are you? Um, who are you? Can you answer that question yet? When I was first asked that, my immediate response was, I'm Jane, I'm Jack's mum and I'm a wife and um, very little else at that point. And I remember my teacher asked me the question at the time, said, that is who you have become, who are you? And I really had to think about that for a while. The answers didn't come readily to me. And I did give that some thought and I kind of sat there and I come to the conclusion, oh, I'm kind, I'm loving. Hmm. I'm, I'm quite funny. Um, I am generous. I am caring. I am kind. I am patient. Um, and this is who I am. Although I really, really felt a failure for a lot of my life. I didn't have the label of accountant or university graduate. So my, my wealthy, my, my, my personal properties never seemed to be enough to be who I was. And I really started to think about this and think, I, I, I want to change this for myself. I want my, my qualities, my, me as a person. Um, to be enough. Of course, like everyone else, I spent a lot of my, my late teens, early 20s um, searching for myself. Although I was there all along, I, I thought I would find it in a relationship or in a night out or in a new job or in another child. Um, and sadly, each one of those were lacking in, in something or other. Um, so I, I realised that I had to come back to me and I had to really begin that journey of finding out who I was um, and getting into the things that weren't bringing me joy. That, that was a huge part of, of my learning journey. And once I'd embarked on that, it's quite addictive to me. Um, I, I love to know why we are the way we are, what's caused us to be that way, and ultimately how we can start to feel better as a result of this. Um, my work subsequently took, took me on in life, and I, I've done a lot of life coaching now. And all of us have this, this unique ability within us. All of us are talented at something. Uh, imagine um, if I'd have gone off to the, um, the what's that chap um, at school? the uh, careers advisor and said, you know, uh, what do you want to do when you grow up, Jane? I'd like to be a medium and I'd like to help people. Uh, I think I'd probably have been laughed out of the office at that point. And so that little dream wouldn't have been encouraged or nurtured. Um, it would have been much more acceptable for me at that point to go in and say, I'd like to be a typist. They'd probably have laid out the red carpet and I'd have been in an office by the weekend. But there was always something in me that I knew that that, that wasn't for me. And if it is for you, that's absolutely fine. You know, I'm not suggesting for a moment that we will become mediums. It wouldn't really work out, would it? Um, but what we need to do is find some happiness and contentment in the roles we are doing in life. 
Um, I, I truly believe that once we start to catch on that we need to honour ourselves and do what makes us happy and stop doing what don't make us happy. I think life has this knock-on effect and it gets a lot simpler a lot quicker. So that's a little bit about my background, my belief system. Um, I believe without a shadow of a doubt that we do go on after this life. Um, I believe that one of the main reasons we're here is to learn to love the self. And that sounds like a little throwaway comment. Um, I remember sitting through many lectures, especially as I was new to this subject, and I kept hearing, you've got to love yourself, you've got to love yourself. And I just think, oh goodness me, I, I, I think I do, I don't know if I do. Um, my life was actually saying that I didn't. Um, my life was in a bit of a mess, um, and it was fairly obvious that I wasn't loving and respecting myself. Um, but nobody ever sat down and told me, well, here are the steps you've got to do to find this, this, this place to be. Um, I always thought that one day, if I met the right chap or... Uh, earn enough money then my happiness would come um, little did I know that this was very much an inside job that took me quite a, a few years after that to realize that it was my responsibility and mine alone um, and it's so hard sometimes isn't it especially when you've been in deep rooted patterns or relationships for a long time and um, we kind of just think this is it and we lose sight of um, that younger vision I remember when um, maybe I was about 14 my, my biggest desire was I was kind of what to write I wanted to um, learn about people I wanted to be sort of um, in and out, would help people grow. Um, I didn't, for a second at that age, maybe think that I'd go on to be a medium. Um, maybe I thought I was going to be a journalist or a nurse. I was always pulled really strongly to helping um, jobs. I also realised in order to do that, I had to kind of clear away a lot of my past and a lot of my baggage that I was bringing forward. And that took, as I say, many years. Um, but I, I remember hearing a great quote once, and it's never too late to start. Um, and certainly my, the course of my work has met me meet many, many people. Um, regardless of age, who have just took life by the, the balls and, and, and made it happen for themselves. So over the next few videos, what we're going to talk about, I'm going to do it step by step, so um, you might well find that next one we're going to start to talk about, um, I think we're going to talk about some self-development things, and I'd also like to go back over the basics of um, spirituality, spiritualism. Um, as I say, it takes more than picking up a pack of cards, I, I think that a lot of the responsibility has been lost over the years. Um, and it's almost now we can make a quick bit of money off this. Uh, I think it's a very hollow way to go about it. Um, and I, I will be discussing this in depth, so, so bear with me if you like. Um, I'm going to leave that for there for now. Um, and as I say, a brief introduction as to what to expect, and we, we will go through some subjects. If you want to get in touch with me, I'll gladly answer any questions you've got. Or if I do set some exercises and you're a little bit unsure as to whether or not you're on the right tracks, again, please get in touch. Um, I'll be happy to help if I can. So thank you um, and I will see you all soon.